I was always intrigued in, about real estate and investing in real estate, and I'd read articles. When I was 13 years old, I bought my own subscription in the Wall Street Journal, and so it did interest me, a possible career in real estate, but you know, I really didn't know which direction I wanted to go until really I was in, in high school and first year of college. My name is Roy Carroll, and I'm the CEO president of the Carroll Companies. Growing up as a very lower middle class upbringing, both my parents worked. My father's a meat cutter, grocery store man. He did a little bit of remodeling on the side. So I'd go help him, you know, after school and on weekends with the remodel jobs. So that's how I got my hands in construction a little bit. We uh, actually lived in, in rental homes. We didn't even own our own homes. I was in high school. After my father bought his first house, he decided to buy some more rental homes and he had an opportunity to buy two homes up in Danville, Virginia. And I'd saved up money mowing lawns, doing odd jobs and such. And so I'd saved a thousand dollars. And so this is a very modest home. And so he asked me if I wanted to buy the, the one home. And so I, I put a thousand dollars down and owner finance, I think that's $4,000 or so. So it's a $5,000 home. And I rented it for a year and uh, sold it for a profit uh, uh, to buy a car, which is a bad investment because cars depreciate in value, right? I should have kept that house. <laughs> so I was in college and my father got laid off from his grocery store business after 20 some years. This is the early 80s, terrible time to go into real estate. Interest rates are very high. But we had some friends that wanted a house built and so they knew my father had done some renovations on the side. So they asked my father if he wanted to build their house. I was going to school here locally, and so I would help after school and on weekends, and, and he and I did a lot of the work hands-on. And when I say did the work, we nailed the nails and swept the floors and did things like that and built the first house. And by the time we'd finished that home, I actually had another set of friends that said, hey, you did a good job with that home. Why don't you, would you be interested in building us a home? And so after building the second house, he and I kind of sat down and said, you know, we, we may be able to make a career out of this. and so. We formed our little company and started doing custom homes on scattered lots around the Greensboro area. We kind of divvied up the worlds. He would run the crews on the job site more so, and I would do more of the estimating and selections with the customers. You know, we still both got out there and drove nails at the end of the day. So uh, it was very rewarding and everything to those early years starting the business with my father. Real estate business has a lot of risk associated. And from the first year that we started the business, we decided that we would, my father had a little bit of retirement savings that he'd lived on. I was a college student, so I didn't, it didn't take much for me to live on. So we decided we'd pay ourselves once a year at the end of the year. So we basically put a third of the profits back into the business to grow it, and we'll each take a third. And so as long as he was in the business up until the early 90s, that's, that's the way we paid ourselves. And so I think that was one of the things that kind of was a catalyst for us to be as successful as we were. It's just that very conservative approach, which I carry on today. We've got a Hyatt Place Hotel right downtown. We've got 300 apartments associated with it. We're getting ready to start up AC Hotel across the street from it. A rooftop restaurant, another 300 apartment associated. Uh, we've got, I don't know how many B safes we have in town here. And whenever we start a new venture, a new project, new idea, we always like to try it out in our backyard where we can kind of tweak it a little bit get the formula just right before we take it on the road. We're always looking for markets that are emerging and areas where there's new growth and opportunity. Uh, and we're, we're also looking for value. We're, we're not gonna go out there and, and be the, the guys that bid and pay top dollar for a, a real estate asset. We really beat the bushes hard, so to speak, and try to find value and then try to add to that value by executing in the vertical construction or if it's an existing building, we. We'll go in and renovate and invest uh, dollars into, you know, reposition it to a, to a nice place. Well, remodeling a building has a lot more brain damage associated because you don't know what you're going to get into. And the building we're sitting in here is 17 story building. It's old Wachovia Bank building. It was built between 63 and 64. And then it was basically abandoned in the early 80s. And so it gone through bankruptcy a couple times and insurance company next door, Lincoln Financial, had purchased the building, and they really purchased it to protect their assets because they own several buildings downtown and several other properties. 
and this is kind of sitting in the middle of them. And so I met with the CEO of the company and convinced him that, you know, we could execute this project and turn into something that Greensboro will be proud of. And so we, we lined up that we we're going to do condos. As you know, this is mid-2005, mid 2006, we we're doing the planning. People lined up to buy condos from us. And, and so we started construction. We had about half the condos pre-sold. And then 2008 hit. And 2009, you were hearing just about every day about a developer who did a condo project and, and uh, they got sideways and they were turning it back over to the bank. And I told people, I said, I will not give this building back to the bank. I was speaking to the CFO one morning and I said, you know, I think, I think it would help us sell more condos and uh, just take that cloud from over the Carroll companies if we just paid off this building. In hindsight, it was one of the smartest things we could have done because word got on the street that, you know, that's how we conduct business. We're not gonna walk away from one of our obligations. And, you know, we never reduced the price of one condo in this building. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're close to sold out and everything, so. And I live here, so all my neighbors are happy with me because I didn't reduce the price or give it back to the bank. So it, it turned out well for everyone here. Well, cell storage is kind of like a close cousin to multifamily anyways, the way I see it. And a lot of our communities, we already had garages, we had storage units on site. So I studied the business and I said, let's, let's come up with something that's a little bit unique. There's a lot of good self storage operators out there today. And so we came up with the Be Safe brand and where we tried to position Be Safe is that it is top end of the market. Our lighting's a little brighter. We temper the temperatures inside a little bit more than most self-storage operators. And we put a lot of money in the exterior facade. All of our exteriors and the Be Safe are, are stone and brick and they really look like an office building. So they fit in well in the, in the upscale communities that we're trying to be in. So that's been a good business model for us. And, and you know, we're spread out pretty much everywhere where we're already with the multifamily. We're also looking to put uh, Be Safe self-storage facilities. Car storage is something that we've studied. There's uh, a number of different variations of car storage across the country. Where we're a little bit different and we're doing it, instead of doing like a condo or one big open space where we're placing cars in, in, in a big open room, these are individual uh, two-story units that we lease. We give you an upfit allowance where you can personalize it, uh, whatever theme you want to come up with. I'm into uh, cars a little bit, some collecting and uh, thought it was a, uh, would go well with some of the other car events that, that I attend and, and be able to promote it with some of our Be Safe Racing. I guess about five years ago, I bought a Ferrari Challenge car and would take it up. There's a, there's a racetrack about an hour north of here in Virginia and uh, was running it around one day and the, a race team uh, was looking to form uh, down in Charlotte and they asked me if I'd be interested in joining them uh, on a Ferrari Challenge Series. And so I said, sure. And so uh, one thing led to another and joined the team and uh, met a lot of great people uh, being involved with that. It's great to be involved with Ferrari. It's helped us brand. It's also helped with employee engagement and Carroll Companies, uh, several employees like to follow the, our racing program. And it's great that it's kind of pulled so a lot of our Carroll Company's employees together and everything around the racing program. We had a car in Le Mans this year, partnered with Ferrari, the Ferrari racing program, built uh, a Ferrari 488 GTE for us to run in Le Mans, and uh, we, we had a good experience with that. Came in fifth in our class, so uh, we'll be back at some point in the future and be on the podium one day. Well, this community, Greensboro, has been very good to me and my family over the years, obviously, and so, you know, we're very blessed to be able to give back to the community, and it, it is rewarding to look out the, the window of our, our home here and, and see various projects we, we have ongoing. Some, sometimes I look out the window and see something, though, that, hey, that needs to be changed. So. <laughs> Greensboro's a beautiful place. It's a great place to live, great place to grow up, and real blessed to be here.